que llevaron a uno de los centros de tortura. Madame la consejera de Estado, Isabel Rocha, de Mayor de Geneva, Mr. Remy Pagani, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'd also like to point out that today is International Women's Day, and we're thrilled to have Dr. Masoud Da Jalal, the first female candidate for the Afghani presidency, former Minister of Women's Affairs, who will also be speaking here at the Geneva Summit. We're thrilled to have her. Good morning. Welcome to the second Geneva Summit for Human Rights, Tolerance, and Democracy. My name is John Suarez. I'm a human rights activist and international secretary of the Cuban Democratic Directorate. The Directorate is part of a civic, nonviolent resistance movement that defends pro-democracy activists human rights defenders, and members of civil society from abuses of Cuba's communist regime. We publish an annual human rights report on Cuba, as well as Steps to Freedom, copies of which are in the lobby. It is an accounting of opposition and civil society activities in Cuba. On behalf of the co-organizers and international coalition of more than 25 human rights NGOs, I am both honored and humbled to welcome all who have come near and far to join us today here at the Geneva International Conference Center, directly across from the United Nations Human Rights Council, which is now in session, and all those joining via webcast from around the world. The first year of the summit coincided with the Durban Review, and the second summit takes place now in tandem with the main annual session of the UN Human Rights Council. Summit organizers are honored to have human rights heroes Václav Havel and Lech Walesa, the former president of the Czech Republic, and Poland as co-chairs of Geneva Summit's Honorary Committee. As we gather here, and many of us are also watching, listening, and participating in the Human Rights Council session across the way and are witnessing some of the worst systematic human rights abusers exerting undue influence and power over the Council, in some cases silencing victims from speaking and frustrating human rights activists. I think back to both our co-chairs. In Czechoslovakia, in the 1970s, Václav Havel was a dissident playwright, followed by secret police, in prison for his beliefs, and in Poland, Lech Walesa, an electrician working at the Gdansk shipyards before being fired in 1976 for his activities as a shop steward, would later be followed and frequently detained for his independent labor activism. All this at a time when the world was convinced that these repressive regimes would go on forever. Both have said much that is relevant to the challenges that we face today. Months after the Warsaw Pact invaded and occupied Czechoslovakia, crushing the Prague Spring, and the idea of socialism with a human face, Václav Havel wrote a letter to the overthrown Czechoslovak Communist Party chairman Alexander Dubček in August of 1969, in which he stated, and I quote, even a purely moral act that has no hope of any immediate and visible political effect can gradually and indirectly over time gain in political significance. That in one sentence describes the evolution of dissident movements in communist states and their impact in shaking up a seemingly all-powerful totalitarian regime, creating cracks in its edifice and over time tearing it down. By 1983, Lech Walesa had played an important role strikes that brought the Polish communist government to the negotiating table where for the first time in a communist state, an independent labor union, solidarity, was legally recognized, only to face repression and attempts to destroy it through martial law. But by 1983, martial law was formally lifted, although repression continued. It was also the year when Valesa won the Nobel Peace Prize. Not allowed to attend the award ceremony in Oslo, Valesa's wife, Danuta, went in his place and read his acceptance speech where he explained what motivated this movement. Again, I quote, we are fighting for the right of the working people to, as to association for the dignity of human labor. We respect the dignity and the rights of every man in every nation. The path to a brighter future of the world leads through honest reconciliation of the conflicting interest and not through hatred and bloodshed. To follow that path means to enhance the moral power of the all-embracing idea of human solidarity. Both men played crucial roles in bringing repressive totalitarian regimes in their respective countries to their end without Democrats engaging in bloodshed against their oppressors. Today in both of their countries, they and their countrymen are free to travel, express themselves, associate freely, and enjoy all those rights that many in the West take for granted. Looking around the room and seeing human rights defenders from Azerbaijan, Burma, China, Cuba, Iran, North Korea, Sudan, Tibet, 
Venezuela, Vietnam, and Zimbabwe. Activists that today live in societies where fundamental human rights are systematically denied and abused. They share with Václav Havel and Lech Walesa the knowledge of living in countries that are not free, where exercising fundamental human rights is an act of courage. One objective of the 2010 Geneva Summit is to give voice to victims of the world's worst human rights abuses, and a second objective is to empower those who suffer repression under closed systems of government. The program over the next two days addresses both these goals. Whether they will be accomplished is up to all of us. It is a tall order because the global human rights situation is deteriorating. In Iran, the contested June election sparked an unprecedented wave of state-sponsored violence and repression. Thousands of peaceful protesters were beaten, arrested, tortured, and killed. One of them, Nida Aja Sultan, age 27, was shot and killed on June 20th, 2009, during the protest. Yes. Okay. Her fiancé, Caspian Makin, is with us here today and will address the summit tomorrow. Official numbers place the number of killed at 36 during the protest, but the opposition places the dead at 72. In 2009, at least 270 people were hanged, and in 2010, at least 12 so far. 4,000 have been arrested, including journalists and reformist politicians. In China, according to Amnesty International, a minimum of 7,000 death sentences were handed down and 1,700 executions took place in 2009. Chinese dissident Lu Jiebo was arrested on June 23rd and charged with inciting subversion of state power for co-authorship.